Nagaland reports seven fresh cases of COVID-19 positive infection today. Total active cases now is 43. Four new cases are from Kohima and three in Dimapur. All positive cases reported so far have all been linked to the returnees from Chennai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges people to be more vigilant and careful in the midst of the COVID pandemic, even as a major segment of the economy has been opened up. Modi says that after so many hardships, the country's deft handling of the situation should not go in vain. Total number of affected people has reached 1,82,143 in the country. This is the highest spike in fresh cases in one day since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in India. Health Ministry says 193 deaths have been registered in the last 24 hours, taking the nationwide toll to 5,164. Well, hello and welcome to this Sunday's edition of news broadcast from News & Trends. Nagaland today reported seven fresh cases of COVID-19 positive infection, taking the count of progressive positive cases to 43. Informing this in a Twitter this morning, State Health and Family Welfare Minister Pang Yupong said, out of 92 samples tested, four female and three male, all returnees from Chennai has tested COVID-19 positive four at Kohima and three at Dimapur. As on 7.25 a.m. 31st May, we have 43 active cases. Accordingly, the total number of active cases in the state is 43. Overall, Dimapur has the highest number of cases at 25, followed by 13 in Kohima and five in Pengsang. So far, all the positive cases reported in the state have all been linked to the returnees from Chennai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged people to be more vigilant and careful in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, even as a major segment of the economy has been opened up, addressing the nation in his Monkey Bart program on All India Radio this morning. The Prime Minister said train services have resumed, including the Shramik train specials and special trains. He added that flight services have resumed and industry too is returning to normalcy. He cautioned that, that there should be no laxity and people should maintain do ki duri, wearing face masks and stay at home to the extent possible. He stressed that after so many hardships, the country's deft handling of the situation should not go in vain. Modi stated that the fight against corona is a reflection of resilience and collective efforts of the people. He pointed out how the country faced unique challenges with a vast population and yet corona did not spread as fast in the other parts of the world. He noted that the mortality rate of corona is a lot less in the country. The Prime Minister held the spirit of service shown by the people and called it the biggest strength. Sharing his pain at the sufferings and hardships of people due to the pandemic, the Prime Minister said coronavirus has afflicted all sections of society, but the underprivileged laborers and workers have been the most affected. He said the entire country understands and feels what they are going through, and everyone from the center, states, to local governance bodies are toiling round the clock. He praised the people who are relentlessly engaged in safely transporting lakhs of laborers in trains and buses, caring for the food and arranging for their quarantine in every district. The Prime Minister said the entire world will celebrate World Environment Day on 5th of June. The theme for this year's World Environment Day is biodiversity. He said that during lockdown in the last few weeks, the pace of life may have slowed down a bit but it has also given the opportunity to introspect on, upon the rich diversity of nature or biodiversity. He said people must derive inspiration from this to live life in harmony with nature. Modi said people have the responsibility to save water as well. The government has announced the first phase of nationwide unlock starting from tomorrow after the fourth phase of lockdown ends today. 
except for the containment zones demarcated by the state and the union territory governments, the first phase of unlock for the remaining part of the country will begin from tomorrow. All activities have been allowed in green and orange zones from 5 in the morning till 9 in the evening except for few which will be opened in a phased manner starting from 8th of next month. Starting tomorrow, there stands no limitation on intra- and inter-state movements unless the state government decides otherwise. No separate permission or permits will be required starting from tomorrow for the both intra- and inter-state movement by citizens as per the central government guidelines. Starting from 8th of June, the doors of temples and other religious places will be open for the devotees. Hotels, restaurants, hospitality services and shopping malls will also see visitors from 8th of next month after around 75 days of closure as per the standard operating procedures finalized by Health Ministry. Educational institutions including schools, colleges, coaching institutes will remain closed till 30th June and decision on the reopening will be considered after consultation of all stakeholders. International air travel except those permitted by the government, metro rail, cinema halls, gymnasiums, swimming pools, entertainment parks, theatres, bars, auditoriums, assembly places and any large congregation include, including religious will continue to remain prohibited nationwide. However, the state governments can impose larger restrictions than those proposed by the centre as per the assessment. Containment zones will, however, remain under complete lockdown till 30th June, barring the essential activities. Vulnerable persons in terms of COVID infection, those above 65 years of age, persons with comorbidities, pregnant women and children below the age of 10 years are advised to stay at home. Home Ministry has also advised everyone to install Arugia Setu app in their mobile phones for helping India's fight against the global pandemic. Health and Family Welfare Ministry has said that a total of 86,984 people affected with the novel coronavirus have been cured and the recovery rate has reached 47.75% in the country. During the last 24 hours, 4,614 people have been cured and 8,380 fresh cases of COVID-19 infections have been reported. Total number of affected people have, has reached 1,82,143. This is the highest spike in fresh cases in one day since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in India. Health Ministry said 193 deaths have been registered in the last 24 hours, taking the nationwide toll to 5,164. According to the Health Ministry data updated in the morning, the highest number of confirmed cases in the country are from Maharashtra at 65,168, followed by Tamil Nadu at 21,184, Delhi at 18,549, and Gujarat at 16,343. The total number of COVID-19 positive cases in Assam surged to 1,272 after 56 people across districts tested positive for the disease, Health Minister Himanta Biswa Sharma said today. In the tweet this afternoon, the Health Minister said, alert 56 new cases of COVID-19 positive. 18 Lakhimpur, 12 Babeta, 7 Udalguri, 5 Baksa, 5 Dubri, 3 Kamrup, 2 Demaji, 2 Airport, 1 Nalbari, and 1 to be ascertained. Of the total cases, currently 1,102 affected persons are receiving treatment in the state, while 163 patients have so far recovered from the infection. Four have succumbed to the viral disease and three have migrated out of the state. Global COVID-19 cases reached 60,60,523 with over 3,69,135 lakh dead. In terms of total number of confirmed cases, the United States is the worst hit with 17,70,384. The U.S. also tops the number of deaths with 
3,781. In terms of cases, Brazil comes in the second place with 4,98,440 infections. This was followed by Russia with 3,96,575. Regarding fatalities, the UK continues in the second position after the US with 38,243 COVID-19 deaths. 28,834 deaths have been reported in Brazil. APC and Dimapur in charge of COVID-19, Waikikheto Sema, today visited the Institutional Quarantine Center at Livingstone Foundation International and interacted with the management and inmates there. Kikheto spoke of the challenges that the Dimapur District Administration is being faced to contain and address issues relating to the pandemic. He said he has been in Dimapur for the past two months to oversee the matters pertaining to the issues and that he has learned a lot through these experiences. The APC said though some of the returnees have left the source of earning and workplaces outside the state, he encouraged them by saying that the government is trying its best to rehabilitate them by way of opening up jobs through entrepreneurships. He also informed the quarantinees that swab tests for them have not been conducted as the tests for the Chennai returnees have still not been completed and also that none of them present at the LFI quarantine centre have so far shown any symptoms of the viral infection. During the course of the interaction, proper social distancing and other health protocols were maintained. Apni ka nahi bo karne, ito pura arrangement the sahi ke na bohar se. Aji force quarantine center the nahi bo pare to isur ke bishe dunya baat hi aase. Popular Naga songwriter and artist Alobo Naga also enthralled the residents of the quarantine center with his performance. The center is being run and managed by the Western Sumi Hoho. The Western Sumi Baptist Akukoho Kakulu, in collaboration with the Dimapur District Administration. A beautiful horizon on the sea. A taste of my freedom on that cross. My shackles removed and the whole world froze. APC and COVID-19 in charge of Dimapur Wai Kikheto Sema and Secretary of Food and Civil Supplies Honje Konyak also visited the quarantine center at Dimapur Government College which is being managed by the Dimapur area Ao Baptist Churches and Ao Civil Societies. The officers visited the infrastructure there where facilities have been made to accommodate 300 persons at the center. Kikheto expressed satisfaction over the arrangements being put in place by the Ao Baptist Churches and the Ao Civil Societies and acknowledged them for coming in aid of the government. He said that Aos are pioneers in various fields and such gesture by the Aos in coming forward at these times are worth of praises. He said that the Dimapur District Administration is being faced with huge challenges, yet they are still going strong with the support of the churches and the civil society groups. The Dimapur District Core Committee DDCC on COVID-19 headed by Wai Kikheto Sema, APC and Commissioner and Secretary held a meeting at Hotel Saramati yesterday to discuss the decision of the state government on testing all returnees and to send them to the respective districts only after testing results were confirmed. DDCC however pointed out that it was facing practical difficulties since there were only one BSL-3 laboratory installed in Kohima having limited capacity and so testing all returnees would take a long time. DDCC said there are many returnees from other states who have completed the mandatory 14 days institutional quarantine period. At the present rate, DDCC said it would not be possible to test all returnees who don't show any symptoms 
since the focus remained on Chennai returnees. It stressed that unless all returnees who have completed the 14-day mandatory quarantine were not released, it would not be possible to accommodate fresh returnees. In the light of the above, DDCC at its meeting suggested that all returnees who have completed 14 days quarantine and shows no symptoms be allowed to go to the respective districts without further mandatory testing, while those from Dimapur be released to undertake home quarantine. Principal Secretary Home Abhijit Sina has said that all the 43 tested positive Patients are being kept under medical observation at the designated COVID-19 hospitals and active surveillance is being carried out to prevent further spreading of the infection. Till date, a total of 2,576 samples have been tested. The results of 1,557 samples have been received, out of which 43 are positive. The results of 1,019 samples are awaited. A total of 4,057 persons are presently under facility quarantine. Through the TrueNet testing machine, so far a total of 86 samples have been tested and 82 are negative. The results of four samples are awaited. He also informed that a special train carrying about 1,600 stranded persons of Nagaland will be leaving Bengaluru, Karnataka on the 2nd of June 2020 for Dimapur. The train is expected to reach Dimapur on the 5th of June 2020. In order to take stock of the district to contain the spread of COVID-19, advisor Industries and Commerce in Natiba, who is also the legislator in charge of Longland, visited the district yesterday and held emergency meeting with District Task Force COVID-19 at the War Room, DC office, Longland. Addressing the District Task Force in Natiba lauded the medical fraternity, district administration, police, NGOs, churches and other frontline workers who are constantly rendering the services to contain and control the spread of COVID-19 in the midst of various obstacles and criticism. Imatiba informed that the state government has decided to install TrueNAP machine in every district and is expected to reach by the second week of June. He also informed that posting of NSDC doctor for Longland will report shortly in the district. That brings us to the end of this broadcast. Do subscribe to us on the YouTube channel and also follow us on Twitter and Facebook as well. Remember to stay home, stay safe and take good care of yourself. From all of us here, it's bye for now and thanks for watching.